Hi, it's Jeff Chalmers here from discoverdoublebass.com, which is the home of online learning for double bass players. And today I'm joined by one of our incredible faculty of bassists, it's the great Katie Thoreau. Welcome, Katie. It's fantastic to have you with us in Thank the UK. You. Thank you. Well, we've had such a fun time this week um, filming lessons and we've been chatting all about the double bass. And you mentioned to me that you'd been asked about uh, advice for people who are new to the instrument, what to look for for buying a bass. So yeah, let's get straight into it. What are the kind of things that you would recommend to a beginner student, maybe picking up their upright and up the upright for the first time? Yeah, so the first thing to consider is that there's no one specific dimension for at least any kind of bass, especially three quarters, like the violin, mm. viola, and cello, all have specific dimensions. If it's a three quarters, it's specifically that. And I don't know why bass, why, why we missed it. It's but incredibly non-standard, isn't it? It is, and it was an oversight, but you know what? It kind of makes it even better because we all come in different shapes and sizes. So for example, my three, I have a three quarters bass that's maybe even just a touch smaller than this. And I'm, I'm kind of short, I'm like five, six, so it works perfectly for me. So. I always tell people, that's the first thing to consider. We're, all our hands are different, we're all different shapes and sizes. So I, I always say, if it has four strings, then that's a good start, you know, start there. <laughs> and you don't have to go expensive. It doesn't mean that you're not gonna get, um, you know, the greatest instrument or the worst instrument, especially if you're just starting out. You wanna have something that you can just practically, can you at least kind of play a scale and make a note on it. Um, I, I do recommend getting adjusters, having a bridge with an adjuster. Even if, it, even if the bass doesn't come with that, you can get a bridge with adjusters for fairly, fairly inexpensively so that you can kind of mess around with this height because if, if you're coming from electric bass, that's a huge difference, this string height. And it'll really, I think it will save you money in the long run as well, because if you go too low with your string heights, mm -hmm. you know, you can only find out what's too low by going too low yeah. and then coming back. And I, I tend to do that until I get, I'm getting too much buzz and then I come back a bit, mm -hmm. bring the heights up, feel comfortable. Uh, what kind of string heights do you tend to go for? Are you fairly moderate, medium? I'm, I'm pretty, I'm pretty moderate. Mm. Um, they're not, they're actually even a little bit lower than this. Um, mm. Cause I, I play all acoustically. I don't use, um, amplification. I mean, I put a microphone in front of the bass, but I, I want to be comfortable when I'm playing and I want it to be my sound. And so to get a loud sound doesn't mean you have to have your strings high up. Mm. You can really get, you know, a nice, and you don't have to play loudly. You know, it's a, that's not a nice sound. You can play and get a nice sound and still pull the string. So I would say you wouldn't want your strings, you know, touching, touching the mm. fingerboard because then you're going to get like that buzz and rattle. Um, and I would also recommend, um, I've had students who buy a bass for four or five hundred dollars. That's not in great condition. And if you have a luthier, you know, anywhere within a hundred miles that you can kind of do an easy drive, you might put in any, you, you might put up to maybe a thousand dollars on the instrument. Maybe that's pretty high end. And then you've got a bass that's really in good condition for fifteen hundred bucks. Yeah, I think that's the thing is getting a really well set up bass or a bass that's well set up with a reasonable set of strings. Mm -hmm. If compared to like your average, you know, set that you might get in a, with a budget instrument, it'll make a massive difference. And you can even get secondhand sets of, mm -hmm. you know, strings like Tomastic Spiral Core. They last for a long time yeah. and still sound amazing. I mean, you know, most players will be, um, you know, able to use well played in strings and they'll sound fantastic for a long time. Decent setup, good set of strings. A good place to look for instruments as well, I'd say, is other um, is local teachers. Yeah, they may know of a student who's passing on an instrument, and they may already have invested that money in the setup. Yeah, um, but I think for, from coming from a bass guitar background, that you know, the, uh, the need for the setup is really is mm -hmm. really high because your ex expectations will be that you'll be able to play uh, play comfortably. Whereas some some especially modern basses. So do you go modern or do you go old? This is a this is actually my instrument that you're holding. It's yeah. an older bass. Um, but would you recommend the student goes for an old instrument or just something new? Uh, I think it doesn't matter so much. I mean, if you have the money, uh, this isn't an endorsement by any means. But yeah. I, I found when I'm on the road and I get really happy because I don't travel with my bass. But if they have a Shen model, S H E N, yep. it's a Chinese made bass. Again, like we were saying, things aren't made in the same size, but those are all the same size. So it makes it a lot more comfortable. So I think you can kind of get one, and you could get one used too, you know, pretty inexpensively within the $2,000 range. Um, old, new doesn't matter. Again, it's just, like you said, the setup is really important to make it easy physically to play the bass because you don't want that to be an, a deterrent, like always being tired on the instrument. Do you find moving, uh, changing between different instruments challenging when you're on the road? I mean, or does it bother you particularly? Or I just have to get used to it. Like this one has a little bit, you know, more more of an E flat neck. Yeah. 
Um, the only time it's difficult if the instrument itself is very, very big, like the body is big, because then it just kind of, you know, kind of hurts and it gets a little tiring to hold that. But I like the, it's not a challenge, but it feels nice. Um, I've, I felt, I've, I listened to a recording the other day where I was in Chicago and I was borrowing a bass and I was like, wow, I sound like myself. And it was the first time I was on a, another bass where I was like, this just sounds like me. But also, I'll get a bass where it might inspire me to play something different because of the setup is a little weird. I was, I think I mentioned this last time, maybe I was in Serbia and it was a bass that was made of different bits and pieces of other instruments. And it just like, I couldn't, I couldn't have that expectation of, okay, I'm going to play this. I had to go in a different direction. So it kind of pushed me creatively. I'm not saying I want that every time. Um, but like I said, if it has four strings for me, that that's like a, that's a good start. Uh, and any other kind of things that people should be looking out for? Anything that you think, you know, this is a, a no-no or, uh, you know, what about string length? Is that something that's, as long as it's fairly moderate, you know? Yeah, like I, I don't geek out that, that far, but yeah. I was, um, I will notice, like if someone has an extra long fingerboard, you know, yeah. that that does make a difference because then you're having to put your arm down lower mm. or or the opposite. So mm. that, that does kind of make a difference. And for strings... I tend to like something that's that the strings are a little bit thicker, uh, again, because you're going to be pressing into the string. So to have something that's very, very thin um, can be a little bit painful for me. Great. Well, that's fantastic. Well, listen, Katie, thank you so much for joining us today. It's a huge topic, and I think there's a, you know, a lot of... Uh, investigation to be done when someone's starting out and uh, join us in the comments below let us know uh, about your uh, instrument that you're thinking about um, and also I go and check out a lesson that Katie's done on YouTube called I think it's simple concepts for double bass players something along those lines she did that for the discover double bass YouTube channel a few years ago and it's one of our most popular uh, beginners lessons and of course where can people find you online Katie oh I'm all over Instagram That's just, true. just my first and last name uh, I just got on TikTok did you because my students were like you have have to be on TikTok. No, so no. I, yeah. lie, I lay awake at night worrying about that because I just don't, yeah. I don't have the energy to do it. I feel like I've just done, I just can't do it. But I know that there's so much stuff happening over there. So maybe one day I will. Yeah, but definitely on, on Instagram. Cool. Yeah. Well, I really appreciate that. Thanks so much for joining me. Keep practicing hard, whatever you're doing. And if you are new to the base, best of luck. Enjoy. It's an incredible instrument.